when is a pain cave not a pain cave? I'll tell you when, when your wife fills it full of Christmas overflow food shopping, that's when. I didn't even know chicken donuts were a thing. She has seen photographs of me from 10 years ago. This is very dangerous behavior. So this is training vlog number four, Christmas edition, or as we call it under coronavirus tier four, training vlog number four. Wasn't gonna even bother doing a training vlog this week, completely demotivated. The pools are shut, the gyms are shut, all my races for after Christmas have been canceled. Even Iron Man next year in June is looking the plan was to just give training a rest, eat sensibly, and then pick it up again next week. And then a few things happened. First of all, I saw all this, and then I had to tell Nixon that we weren't racing on the 28th as planned, and it broke his little doggy heart. And then somebody told me that the Alp de Zwift ride that I did last weekend, had I gone under 60 minutes, I would have got a badge. In other words, I was heading towards being very fat, having a very sad dog, and having no badge. So I figured do a training vlog, it will force me to do some training for it. I did a Zwift race yesterday. Me and Nixon are going for a run in a minute, an easy hour, and then tomorrow I'm going back up the Alp de Zwift and I'm getting the bloody badge. And then that will be it until after Christmas next week. I do train on Christmas day, but it'll be a traditional 5K run with the family. And to be honest, they run slow as fun. They like to run for fun only. So we've finished our one hour session, nice and gentle today, but the weather's been terrible. So everywhere was flooded, which Nixon loves because he likes swimming and running and mud. So he's had a good time. Yeah, gonna get back to the house and run through the Zwift race from last night. And as a bit of a clue as to how it went, the house is now calling me Mr. Podium. By which I mean I'm asking everyone in the house to call me Mr. Podium and no one is. I might have to start cancelling pocket money and stuff. Disrespectful. Talking of everything being soaking wet, my favourite gadget almost in the garage is my boot dryer. Whenever I come back from a run, whether it's in the summer and the shoes are covered in sweat or like today they're covered in mud, literally filled up with mud, I come back, I rinse them off, I then hang them up to dry if they need to just drip dry for a bit. And then when they're uh, halfway there, I stick them on the boot dryer. Here's Jen's cooking from earlier. Absolutely brilliant little gadget. The idea of putting your shoes away when they're still either sweaty or, or damp and expecting them to last for ages is nuts. Stick them on a boot dryer. Whatever you get for Christmas, send that crap back that you don't really want and order yourself one of these. They're like 10, 15 quid. Absolutely brilliant. If you are a boot dryer company and you wish to sponsor me, I'm your man, send me loads. I'll have a rack on the go at once. I'll wear a baseball cap with your logo on it. It doesn't matter. Um, I am very, very cheap. Right, gonna review last night's race in a second. But first, I thought it might be useful to explain what the point of that race was, and also to a certain extent today's run, tomorrow's climb up the Alp, and even Christmas Day's 5K. I am happy to put aside my proper training for a week or so. I am happy to allow myself to simply revisit it soon. If I didn't, with everything that's going on right now, the lockdown, the natural break that Christmas would cause anyway, if I just forced myself to train despite all those things, there's a very real danger that I just end up not enjoying any of it. So a break is fine, but stopping completely is not. I used to think, that I would get to a certain level of fitness where I could just stop, take time off, and then go back to it whenever I liked and just pick up where I'd left off, sort of free wheel with no ill effect. That is not the case at all. To a certain extent, there is a little element of it. I would be fitter after two weeks of nothing than somebody who'd simply never done anything, but that's a ridiculous comparison. The comparison that is relevant is me at the start of that freewheeling process and me at the end of that freewheeling process, there is a dramatic fall off. I've experienced it many times. I've done things like ultra marathons where I've trained really hard, done the event, and then thought I can kick back for a while and just get back into it in due course. Before I know it, nothing has happened for two or three weeks. 
other than I've personally increased the stock price of Ben & Jerry's. The bottom line is I find it incredibly easy to go to a place where I might as well just takes over. I'm not training properly, so I might as well have that cake. I might as well watch TV all day long. Or the worst one is, I might as well wait another day or so until I start it up again. I might as well wait for Monday, or I might as well wait till the first of the month, or I might as well wait till New Year. If it's Friday and you wait till Monday, you will spend Tuesday and Wednesday, possibly Thursday, trying to counter the negative effects of the Saturday and Sunday. If you simply start on Friday, Friday is positive, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday are positive, you just gained a week from nowhere. So if you're ready to start, start. Don't just find an excuse not to because of some random calendar nonsense. So it is vital that I do something. That race last night, I can't eat badly before that. I will throw up on the bike. The same with the run today. I can't eat junk food tonight because I will ruin my attempt to get up the Alp tomorrow morning in under an hour. Even the run on Christmas Day. It acts as a reminder that this is the sort of thing that I do. It's not what most people do, get up and go for a run on Christmas Day. I don't want to be like most, I want to be above average. They are mental hurdles in the way of making poor choices. So last night's race is not particularly designed to have moved my fitness forward. It's more like those little metal hook things that rock climbers whack in the wall and then clip their rope into before they climb on again. So if they do fall back, they don't fall back quite so far. Not had a rock climbing analogy in a while. So let's look at the race. It was a 16.2 kilometer race with only 129 meters of climbing, so fairly flat. Eight laps, about 60 riders in category C. And if you're wondering how I've got on with my commitment that I made to always be on the bike at least 10 minutes before so I'm well warmed up, that clicking noise you can hear is me locking into the pedals with 20 seconds to go. Okay. 10 seconds, bags of time. Shocking warm up aside, the start is fine. I move off, I try and stay reasonably close to the front, at least in sight of the front. The pace is fairly standard for a category C short race, 300, 400 watts every now and again to hold myself in that, that front group of maybe 10. And the race was largely uneventful. I just planned to stay in sight of the leaders for the first six laps, and then with two laps to go, figure out some sort of plan. And it was all pretty consistent. My heart rate not struggling particularly. I actually felt quite relaxed for the first four or five laps. I'd occasionally take anywhere from the lead to position maybe 10th at worst, certainly always in sight of the rider at the front. I was quite aware that the group I was in had broken away from riders further back, so I certainly didn't want to get dropped off of this group, but that didn't feel like it was going to happen, certainly not in the first four, five, six laps. Somebody had asked that I put the paragraph on the screen when I race. I have no idea what I'm looking at there other than it's colourful, but if that's of interest to you, knock yourself out. And let's jump to lap eight when it all gets a little bit more interesting. At this point here, I'm slightly aware that the group in front are trying to break away from the group that I'm finding myself in, which is the little pack following on behind. I've still got the aero helmet unused. My plan was to drop that 300 meters to go when I do my final sprint. This section here is downhill and I had used this on every previous lap to make sure that if I was drifting from the front a little bit, I moved myself back up towards it. In fact, I would routinely find myself back up into first or second place after this descent. This time round though, that didn't happen. Obviously everyone started to pick up the pace knowing that the end is near and they were moving away from me as fast as I was trying to catch them. So at this point here, 800 meters to go and me and the chap beside me have both realized that we are getting left behind and start to put down some power, five, 600 watts occasionally. It's a tricky one though. I know that in 300 meters, I've got my final 300 meters that I need to put some serious power down I can't be dropping eight, 900 watts at this stage. And as we round this corner, I realize that I have to use my aero boost now. I am too far off the pack. It's no good having that boost available for my final sprint if I'm sprinting way off the leaders. And here we go, 300 meters left. Oh. I put down as much power as I can, six, seven, 800 watts, and I start moving my way through the field. 
to be honest, at this stage, given it wasn't a race I'd really prepared for or warmed up for, in my mind I was just thinking, out of 60, 70 odd riders, if I can come in the top 10, I'll be happy. Ah! Ah! And across the line in fourth place, no problem with that whatsoever. And looking on Zwift Power for a result minus the unregistered and the people that are cheating, I'm in second place, which I'm absolutely delighted with, no problems with that whatsoever. Amongst the C group riders, as I'd expect, I'm right at the top in terms of wattage, but also the heaviest, uh, almost. In fact, I am the heaviest. There is someone there at 100.7 kilograms. So uh, almost the same as me, just not quite as quick. In fact, when I look at all the riders together, my wattage puts me right up there amongst the A and B riders. Although the pointlessness of looking at pure wattage is evident because the A rider that won the whole thing is probably in 12th or 13th place down there. So super happy with the results and a couple of interesting things that it threw up. First of all, rocker plate, I finally figured out how to use it, which sounds obvious. So looking at this clip here, you'll see me stand in a second. Now on the Alps climb at the weekend, when I stood, I rocked wrong. I push down with the left leg and move the bike left. If you do that on the road, you fall on your ass. But this time I nailed it. Push left, move the bike right and vice versa. Slow down here, you can see it even easier. The bike moves away from the power leg and it felt supernatural to do that. Push with the left, bike goes right. Push with the right, bike goes left. I can't wait to climb with it tomorrow now. It looks like the bike moving around like this is more work to ride, but actually it feels really in tune with your body. And the other thing the race made me consider is the category I race in, category C. When I started using Zwift, that's where my FTP result put me. I joined those races and early on I finished pretty average amongst them. Obviously I've now got a few podiums, hence everyone here is supposed to be calling me Mr. Podium, but just incredibly unsupportive. Consequently, a few people have asked me, should I be riding in the B category soon? To which the answer is no. The races that I've done lately have been short sprints, and because of my weight, I do quite well at those. As soon as the distance gets longer, I am very much more middle of the pack. And on the occasional ride I've done that has been really long, like the group rides at the weekend that can be two, three hours plus, I often get dropped completely and finish on my own. So as soon as Swift Power says you should be riding in category B, I will obviously go to category B. Until then, I am really happy where I am. And if anyone thinks I'm putting myself into a position where I can achieve success against others sort of artificially, I am six foot six, 220 pounds, and choose to run ultra marathons with a Jack Russell. Right, tomorrow, back on the bike, out to Zwift, get that bloody badge. It was the day before Christmas and I am going to get a badge. Everything is ready to go. I've got my notes up here pinned up on the wall telling me exactly what timings to hit to get up this hill in exactly, well, just under 60 minutes. Everything is set up and it is all good to go. This video is gonna be fast because I will do a longer version over Christmas explaining exactly what my timings were more detail about how it goes and hopefully the positive result that comes from it but today i'm just going to film enough footage to get it into the vlog so that the fact i've done it gets put up before christmas and you can see that it is 11 a.m nearly it takes me half hour to get to the bottom of the hill it takes me an hour to go up it. it takes me half hour to get up off the floor afterwards and i've been told by my family that if i'm still doing youtube stuff at three o'clock this afternoon my Christmas is cancelled. So I need to just edit some quick stuff together and get it into this training vlog. If you think my family sound like they've been a bit mean, that's because I spent pretty much all day yesterday repeatedly telling them with great excitement for me uh, how many people had seen my last Alp climb video. If you're one of the thousands that watched it, thank you very much. Uh, you made my day and pretty much ruined theirs at the same time. So good work. Right, let's jump on this thing and get to the bottom of the hill and then blast up this bloody thing. Okay, bottom of the hill, ready to go, feeling all right. Uh, there are only gonna be, for the purposes of the training vlog, two updates, one in half an hour. Corner 10, last time I got to corner 10 in 30 minutes, 30 seconds. Given it's halfway, I wanna knock an hour, a minute off my hour time. I need to get to corner 10 in 30 minutes or less. And then the top, 
That is it, we are good to go. Everything is ready, everything is recording. Okay. Halfway last time, 30 minutes, 30 seconds. Halfway this time, 28 minutes, 30 seconds. Ha! Let's get this. Okay. I don't want to get all sports sciencey, but I have crushed the shit out of this. Coming in through, boys. Okay, minute of work. Let's do this. No two, one, two. Come on. Come on. Come on, 400. Okay, can't feel my legs. Come on. Come on. Job done, 59 something, not lying on the floor, which is a result. And unlike last time, I am uh, mentally stable enough and physically to ride down the other side, which I'm gonna do in a second. I'm done, he's not, he's rolling down the hill at 70 kilometers per hour on his own, which is very energy efficient of me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. Please do, because I've had 120 subs away from my 5,000 subs target by the end of the year, at which point I win the bet with my children who said I couldn't get there in that time. If I got it on Christmas day, it would be a seasonal miracle, the like of which I can't recall since Christmas day 2008, when my then nine-year-old son got a little basketball net for Christmas and I, I rejected his jump shot so hard he didn't go back to school until mid-January. Merry Christmas, everyone.